Right, listen up. Elections aren't just about picking leaders. They're messing with our money too. When we vote, we're giving the economy a good kick up the backside. Sometimes it's a gentle nudge. Other times it's more like a boot to the rear. It's like trying to predict the weather. You might have a general idea, but you'll probably end up surprised. So buckle up, because we're about to take a high-speed tour through the twists and turns of elections and the economy. Now, imagine the economy as a massive, temperamental engine. It's a complex machine with countless moving parts, each one crucial to the overall function. When it's running smoothly, it powers everything from small businesses to large corporations, creating jobs and wealth. Elections are like hitting that engine with a big hammer. The impact can be jarring, causing the engine to sputter or even stall. The uncertainty of an election can send shockwaves through the entire system. Businesses start to get twitchy, like meerkats popping their heads up. They become hyper-aware of the political climate, constantly scanning for signs of change that could affect their bottom line. Different political parties have different ideas about how to run the economy. Some advocate for lower taxes and deregulation, while others push for increased government spending and social programmes. These differing philosophies can create a tug of war that leaves businesses in a state of limbo. Some companies might hold off on big decisions until they know who's in charge. They delay investments, postpone hiring and put expansion plans on ice, waiting for a clearer picture of the future. This can lead to a slowdown in spending and investment. When businesses are cautious, the ripple effects can be felt throughout the economy, from reduced consumer spending to lower stock market performance. On the flip side, if businesses like what they hear, they might start revving their engines. Optimism can lead to a surge in activity, with companies ramping up production, hiring new employees and investing in new projects. Regular folks like you and me start thinking differently too. We might reconsider our spending habits, delay big purchases or even change our investment strategies based on the political landscape. It's all a big, complicated dance with everyone trying to second-guess everyone else. The economy and elections are intertwined in a delicate balance each influencing the other in ways that are often unpredictable, but always significant. All right, let's talk about the good stuff. Sometimes elections can give the economy a boost that would make a rocket engineer jealous. Take the US election of 1980, when Ronald Reagan swept into office. Reagan's promises of tax cuts and deregulation had businesses more excited than a dog with two tails. The stock market took off, unemployment dropped, and economic growth soared. But hold your horses, it's not all champagne and caviar. Sometimes the aftermath of an election can leave the economy feeling like it's been on a three-day bender. Take Venezuela in 2013, for instance. When Nicolas Maduro won, the economy went into a meltdown, inflation skyrocketed, the currency plummeted, and oil production dropped. Then there's Brexit. The morning after the referendum, the pound dropped, and the FTSE 100 wobbled. After the 2000 US election between Bush and Gore, the markets got jittery due to uncertainty. Sometimes the worst thing for the economy isn't losing an election. It's not knowing who's won. Now, let's hear from some proper eggheads on this whole election economy malarkey. These experts have spent years studying the intricate dance between political events and economic outcomes, and their insights are invaluable. Paul Krugman says while elections can cause short-term jitters, it's the long-term policies that matter. He emphasizes that the immediate market reactions are often overblown and that the real impact of an election is seen in the policies that are implemented over the years. According to Krugman, it's crucial to look beyond the headlines and focus on the underlying economic strategies. Christine Lagarde warns that political uncertainty can be a real spanner in the works for economic growth. She points out that businesses and investors hate uncertainty, and when political climates are unstable, it can lead to reduced investments and slower economic progress. Lagarde stresses the importance of stable governance for fostering a healthy economic environment. Burton Malkiel thinks trying to predict how elections will affect the market is about as useful as predicting the weather a year in advance. He argues that markets are influenced by a myriad of factors, and elections are just one piece of the puzzle. Malkiel advises against making investment decisions based solely on election outcomes, as the market's reaction can be highly unpredictable and often counterintuitive. The Bank of England often sits on interest rate decisions around election time to avoid political bias. This cautious approach is meant to ensure that their actions are not seen as favoring any political party. However, 
This strategy can also lead to delays in necessary economic adjustments, which can have their own set of consequences. They say it's to avoid any appearance of political bias, but if you ask me, it's because they're as confused as the rest of us. The complexity of balancing economic needs with political neutrality is a challenging task, and even the experts can find themselves in a quandary. It's like they're playing a high-stakes game of economic poker, and elections are the wild card. The stakes are incredibly high, and the outcomes can be unpredictable. Just like in poker, a single unexpected move can change the entire game, making the role of elections in economic planning both fascinating and fraught with uncertainty. Right, so we've seen that elections can make the economy bounce around. But why? It's all about expectations and confidence. When a new government comes in, it's like getting a new captain for your football team. Businesses start planning based on what they think the new lot in charge will do. If they reckon taxes are going down, they might start hiring. If they think regulations are coming, they might put the brakes on. Sometimes it's not even about what actually happens. It's about what people think will happen. If enough people think an election will tank the economy, they might just make it happen. So there you have it. The intricate dance between elections and the economy. Elections and the economy are more tangled up than a pair of earphones. It's a mess of cause and effect, predictions and panic, hope and fear. Every decision made in the political arena sends ripples through the economic landscape, affecting everything from stock markets to job markets. But here's the thing, it matters. It matters a lot. The choices made by those in power can shape the economic future of a nation, influencing the lives of millions. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about numbers on a screen or policies in a manifesto. It's about real people and real lives. It's about your job, your savings, the price of your weekly shop. The economic policies set by the government can determine whether you can afford to buy a home, send your kids to college or even retire comfortably. When you step into that polling booth, you're casting a vote for a certain economic vision. You're making a choice that will impact not just your future, but the future of your community and your country. Now, I'm not here to tell you how to vote. That's a deeply personal decision that each of us must make based on our own values and beliefs. But I am saying this, pay attention. The stakes are high and the consequences are real. Listen to what the politicians are saying about the economy. Scrutinize their plans and promises. Are they realistic? Are they in line with your own economic interests and those of your community? Think about how their plans might affect your wallet. Will their policies lead to economic growth and stability? Or will they create uncertainty and hardship? It's your future they're playing with. The decisions made today will shape the economic landscape for years to come. So when election time rolls around, remember, you're not just choosing a government, you're choosing an economic path. A path that will determine the opportunities available to you and your loved ones. You're choosing an economic path. Make sure it's one that leads to a future you believe in.